Hey everybody, my name is Mark Brown. I'm with a company called JRC in Salt Lake. Um, we're a lighting manufacturer's representative. Um, we're also the representative for Crestron Lighting Controls and GE Lighting Controls, which you have both of in this building. Um, the Crestron Lighting Controls are particularly in these, these auditorium rooms, the smaller ones. The large auditorium is something different, but in most of these lecture rooms slash classrooms, uh, they are a Crestron dimming system. Uh, I don't know if anybody's familiar with the graphic guy yeah. from Lutron, but it's a very similar system. I'm going to come over here. This is your main control unit in all of these rooms. This, have, this is the brain. It does all the scene control. Um, it maintains all of that. Um, if you look on the front of this, this control unit, you have six buttons across the front that pertain to scenes. So if you select one, it just goes to a default scene right now. The scenes are all customizable. You can change them to whatever you want. Um, so you've got your six scenes. You've got a master raise and lower. What that'll do is obviously whatever scene you are in, you can raise all the lights up and down. So if nobody knows anything about the unit at all, they could just come in here and say, I want it dimmer in here and they can hit the lower button and uh, lower the light. So set them to whatever look they want. Um, obviously there's an on and an off button. The on and the off button will turn everything to 100%. Okay, Off will go to zero. The switches by the doors do exactly the same thing as the on and off. So on uh, is 100% and off is off. And you have one at the doorways. Now, the on scene is also a programmable scene. So if for any reason they want, you, they would like to have, when somebody comes in, maybe they don't want all the lights to come on when they just hit the on button. You can program that scene as well. So, to program scenes, you open up the door, and you can see the lighted bar graphs. That, that right there is indicating the status of all the zones that we're using. So if, if there, if there was only two lighted graphs and you were in the on position, then only two of them would have LEDs. Okay, so that would mean there's only two zones. So in here we have four zones. All right. To to change the look or change a scene, you pick whichever scene you want. For example, we'll go to number one. Push and hold it. It's going to recall that scene. And then you're going to get some flashing lights on the side, and it's going to say scene one and the scene one button's flashing. When you're in scene change mode, every switch becomes a rocker switch. So if you grab the button and you rock it one direction, you can, you can raise lights up. Okay, so you can raise them up to different, different levels. Um, turn some off. When you're done, you would hit the save button and it saves that scene. Okay, pretty simple. If you forget or you have trouble with it, it's all right here on the inside of the cover on every one of these units. Okay, it tells you exactly to do how to do what I just did. Okay, to do the on scene, if you want to change what the on scene is, it's exactly the same. You push and hold the button, wait for the flashing lights, set your light levels where you want them, and hit save. Okay. In every one of these rooms, you have <coughs> occupancy sensors in the ceiling. Those occupancy sensors are not going to turn the lights on. So if somebody walks in the room, they got to hit a button there or they got to hit a button here to turn lights on. The occupancy sensors will turn lights off when the room is vacant. So if they leave it on and walk out, lights will turn off when the, when the sensors time out. That's the only function for the aux sensors. All right. Um, this unit right here in the wall serves only one purpose. It has a lot of buttons and dials that will do absolutely nothing. So you may get somebody pushing buttons thinking, well, you know, why isn't it doing anything? It's not going to. All right. This unit right here is, is strictly for the AV people to connect to. If they want to control the lights through their system, they can connect to this unit uh, using an RS-232 connection and they can interface with the lighting controls that way. All right. If they don't interface with it, it doesn't do anything. All right. I'm sure you'll get questions on it. They'll think it's a volume control or something else, but it's not. 
all right? There's one other type of pressure on system in here that I want to show you. It's on one of the rooms upstairs. It's got a divider in the middle of it. I just want to show you how that room is functioning right now so that that one's the only one that would be any different. All the rest are exactly the same. All right, so let's go up there. All right, so up here you'll notice there's partition in the room. There's only one dimming zone per side. So the way these switches are going to operate, you've got an on button. It's also raise and lower and an off button. Now, right now, the two blank buttons, the engraved buttons have been ordered. Um, you'll have a button in here that says on with arrows up and down, okay? What that means is, with them in the on position, if I push and hold, I can dim the lights. If I push and hold again, I can raise the lights. And that, that'll control just this room. If I hit off, it just does this side, okay? On the other side, it works exactly the same, however, you have this main controller, the scenes on this unit pertain to both rooms. So when I select scene one, it takes both rooms to that scene. Scene two, same thing, okay? So if they're using the room in a combined atmosphere, then they're going to want to control the room with this, okay? All on is still all on. You still have master raise and lower. And then you got your six scenes that you adjust exactly like you would any of the other systems. If they're using the rooms independent, they're going to use them with this switch. So when the partition's closed and somebody's in here that don't know what they're doing, they're going to be turning each other's lights on and off? If they're using this, if they're using this unit, yes. If they're using this right here, no. You know, you may want to, it may make sense to put a label across here that says free room combined use only. You know, something that tells people that. Um, but yeah, if, if the partition's closed and they're just right here going on and off, it won't matter. Okay, so that's that's the only difference between the two rooms. All right, same thing with the occupancy sensors. Okay, uh, they will not turn lights on; they will just turn them off if, if the rooms are vacant. All right, any questions? That's your Crestron dimming system. Crestron has a tech support line that's 24/7. You run into problems and you can't get a hold of me, um, I can give you a card. I'm here locally in Salt Lake, so. You know, if you have problems with it, you can you can go through us to get it re get it maintained. But Crestron does have a tech support line, so if you if you have problems with that, um, you'll have either the information is in the O and M's that we've already given to Taylor. So, okay. Is everything in in that box right there? Is there like a, a centrally located big master? Nope. Not it's all everything's there. right there. Everything's right here. The, for for all the Crestron little lighting systems, all the control, all the brain work is right there. Yeah. Okay. In fact, there might be a manual in that box right there on the floor if you guys want to snag one. Yeah. All right. All right, so what we've got here is your GD lighting control panels. Um, there's two on this floor and one on each of the floors below. Um, GE's uh, been around for a long time as far as the relay systems go. And so they've got a pretty uh, reliable system here. So let's just take a look at components first. You guys are probably familiar with some of the stuff in here. Um, down each side, this, this is a low voltage compartment, so there should not be any line voltage in here. But down each side, you got your relays. All right. Next to each relay is a terminal block and an override button. So as long as there's electronics in the, or powered up in the panel, you can override the relay on and off by pushing the button. Okay? How long will that stay on when we're building the um, system it'll, shut it off? It'll stay on until the next command comes, whatever it is, whether it's a, from building management or photo cell or whatever. Um, up here you have group buttons. Those are what we call channel buttons. Um, you can assign any number of relays in your panel to one button and control them all together. Okay? Um, up at the very top, we have our communication line coming in, communication line going out if it's required. Um, and then just down on the sides here, we've got two silver switches one on the left side, which powers the motherboard, one on the right side that powers everything else any accessories, switches, anything like that. Okay? So, to program a group, to make a group on a channel, you can push and hold the channel button 
and you see all the lights flashing. Okay, the, you notice the lights in the hallways aren't flashing, it's just indicating in here which relays are part of this channel. To take relays out of it, push the button next to it, and it'll remove them from the group. Okay, push the button next to it again, it puts them back in the group. Um, once you're done with the channel, you can move on to the next. If you want to add some to channel B, you do the same thing. Whichever one of these up here is flashing, if you push it again, it takes it out. Okay? So, um, by putting things on a channel here, you can use this terminal block and bring a dry contact of any kind into the terminal block and control your lights that way. You know, some people will take a security system contact to it, to the off point, and they'll just, when they hit the security system, it turns all the lights. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> this system, however, <coughs> you got a panel on each floor. It's all being controlled by the BMS system. <coughs> so they're tied into it. That's their communication cable. And they're tied into every panel and they're communicating directly. These cables here were the communication bus if we were doing the control ourselves. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so they're taking control of the panels. These are just here between panels for, you can use them for whatever. Or if we ever had to take control of it from uh, GE side. Okay. In these two enclosures, we have photo cells or photo cell controllers. So let me open one of these up. You have two interior photo cells and one exterior photo cell. For the whole building? Uh, it's for all the panels. Well, this one, you've got one photo cell for lights on this level over there in the windows. And then you have a photo cell on the other end in that main high entry area. Okay. So, the photo cells are up in the ceiling, <coughs> kind of, I think they're both on an angled ceiling. And the way the photo cells work is they project a 60 degree cone out. And so what they do is they take in consideration reflection, absorption, um, and all that within that cone. So by the time it hits the ground, the cone could be 10, 15 feet around. It's going to take an average of everything it sees in there and come up with a foot candle level or a voltage, okay? It sends that voltage back to this unit here, and this unit converts it to, to a digital signal so we can control relays. <coughs> so, for example, things that will affect it, dark walls will affect it, light walls will affect it, dark carpet will affect it. It's gonna look at anything light or reflective as uh, daylight or brightness, anything that absorbs light, black, darkness, it's going to look as kind of shadow or darkness. So that will affect it a little bit. So if you had a photo cell pointing directly over a black uh, floor, you're going to have to have the settings really, really low on that sensor before it'll switch anything off, just for the fact that it looks like it's dark in the sensor. Okay? So keeping that in mind, you do have some adjustability on here. Okay? So if you look at the, the control module, you have four wires that go to the sensor head. You have two wires, a red and a black, that are the on and off for the relay that, the relay that it controls, okay? <clears throat> and then you have your power, all right? There's a switch up in the upper left corner that's a test button. So if you want to put it in test mode, you can go cover it with your hand, hit it with a light, and, and watch it change state right away. If you have the delay turned on, which is recommended, it, the light level in that space has to change for a minimum of six minutes before the lights will change. Okay, that's just to avoid the, pluff, the puffy clouds in front. Cloud, come over. cloud comes over, gets dark for a couple minutes, and then goes away. <coughs> so, if you find that it's bright enough out there that those lights should be off, you can come in here and you can adjust your sensor. Okay, there's two little dials. You'll need a little tweaker screwdriver, control screwdriver to do it. And if you look at it. On the sides here, you've got four different ranges. The switch for this sensor is in the second one down, which means 10 to 100. That means on the dial, one is going to represent 10 foot candles, 100, or 10 is going to represent 100. Okay. So if you if you want to 
mess with it, you've got a high setting and a low setting. The high setting is what level do you want the lights to turn off at? And the low level is what, light, what level do you want them to come back on if they are off, okay? <coughs> so for example, right here, I'm, if I stick my screwdriver in it, there is an indicator on the end of it. We are pointing at about 60 foot candles, okay? So we're pointing at the number six. So when the light level reaches above 60, those lights should turn off, okay? And then on the lower level, we're, we're at about three. So when it reaches below 30 foot candles, they should come back on. That's just typical. We're, we're looking at this as 30 foot candles saying, oh, there should be plenty of light, but we're not taking into account everything the sensor is. So it may need to be adjusted. Once all the carpet's in, you got furniture in, and all those kinds of things, it, I won't say it may need to be, it will need to be adjusted. All right, <coughs> so to adjust it, I can adjust the high up or down, um, and I can adjust the low accordingly as well. If I want to test the setting, if I can put it, I can put it in test mode, and then I can go out there and hit it with a light, you know, and, and watch it change. Okay. <coughs> Just remember, whenever you're done, make sure that the, you turn the test mode back off. Otherwise, you get strobe lights up there. Okay. So all your daylight sensors are the same. You have one on the west end, up high, on this level. And you have one on a, right here in the center, um, up in that slope ceiling as well. Okay. <coughs> Any questions on the GE panel? Yeah. Which one is this controlling right now? This one right here is controlling the daylight sensor on this floor. Can we tell that by looking here at this relay? That's not the relay. The relay That's is not this a relay. One. It's this one. <coughs> when the so electrician, this is this is, the, this is power supply. to the group or what? Yeah, the electrician will have a load schedule up here for you, telling you that relay three okay. is whatever light area. Yeah, they're they had some written ones. I'm sure they've probably pulled them out to make the permanent labels. Okay. <coughs> so you know, if it makes sense, we can write in the box. You know, which photo cell it is. We can do that too if you want. If that will help. So is this all interior, or does this include some exterior lighting? Uh, this photo cell is all interior. Yeah. This photo cell here is all exterior. Okay, it's controlling exterior lights. Right now, right now, the building management is controlling everything. <clears throat> the only thing it's not controlling is the interior photo cell controlled lights. It's turning them on and off during the day, but it's not doing the photo cell function. So we're doing that. The exterior lights. Um, are really going to be controlled by your their okay. system. So they may have a photo cell on their system as well. Uh, I'm pretty sure they probably do. And then they have their astronomical clock. So, so this one right here is all terminated and wired up. And you'll notice it's not terminated in relays right now because they're controlling everything. So, okay. Any other questions? <coughs> warranty on this panel. Um, the factory warranty is. Or they warrant the re or not warrant, but they guarantee the relays for 100,000 cycles. With on-off being one one cycle, they're rated for 100,000, so they can do it 100,000 times. If anything's going to fail in the in, within the warranty period, it would be a relay. You don't get a lot of them, but I would say probably three or four percent, maybe. What's do you have an idea of <coughs> the life expectancy of photo cells themselves? I mean, um, these are low voltage photo cells, so they're not susceptible as much to the. Hard to the line voltage ones, yeah. they're gel filled, so <clears throat> I I have never replaced one because it just was too old and worn out. Yeah. Um, I have replaced them that have gotten damaged. Um, as far as damage goes on the panel, a um, couple things to notice. You'll notice up here we've got a light and a red LED, okay, that's flickering <clears throat> consistently. That means it is talking to something. <clears throat> if you look down here, through this LED right here, you got a flashing green light. <coughs> if you look at it really close in the, on the board, it says I'm okay right next to the light. That means as long as it's flashing green, the board's okay. If you walk in here and say, you know what, none of the lights on this floor have been working for the last couple days, and you come in here and you don't, and the only red lights you see is this one here and this one here, but you don't see any red on the board, that generally means the board's dead. Things that will take the board out would be something like a lightning strike, <clears throat> a, uh, a prolonged surge or brownout would also damage the board. 
<coughs> a lot of times the board will go into kind of a protective mode where it'll dump its memory to protect the board itself. If it dumps the memory, it, the board can be reloaded and I can actually do that locally. If it, if it does, if it's worse than that, then it'd be a board replacement. Okay. Um, if you have any problems with it, there's, there's a 1-800 number up here. <coughs> well, they may have moved it. It's right here. On the, on the back of the panel, you can call that number. Their normal business hours are not 24-7, but they are very, very knowledgeable and they can walk you through it pretty, pretty much without any problems. Um, <coughs> you'll notice right here in the catalog number, if you were to call somebody and say, I have a GE panel and I'm having problems with it, if you call the tech support, they're going to say, what kind of panel is it? This right here is going to tell them everything they need to know. You say it's a PSLM. Okay? That's going to tell GE everything that they need to know about this panel and they can help you out. Okay? A lot of, <coughs> there's no other part numbers on the panel that are going to give them what they need. So you would say, I've got a GE panel, it's a PSLM. Okay? <coughs> Any other questions? Okay, last maintenance point on every panel, there's two little fuses, little teeny ones, that are to protect the board or to protect the power supplies. They're never going to blow unless, if I was to come here and cut those two wires at the same time, it's creating a short and it'll blow it out. Okay, once everything's installed, there's really nothing to, to blow those fuses. Okay, if they do, there are 2.5 uh, 2 amp slow blow fuse from Radio Shack. Okay. Anything else? Okay, that's that's uh, that's your lighting control systems that that I that I'm in charge of for you. If you have any questions, feel free to call me. Um, I've got a label like this in every panel. Uh, I can't read the phone. There is no phone number on it, but I'll I'll leave a card with you, and you've got a card with the training here as well. Um, if you have questions on it, let me know. Okay.